What I'm saying to you right now is profound because of the camera angle and this dramatic cutaway to my hand with no context. I'm also speaking in a slow voice, so and what I'm saying right now carries a lot of weight, even if it's just nonsense. But that's okay. So this video isn't going to be some sort of high produced, nice, sweeping rack focus camera angles and dramatic narration or anything like this. No. This is me talking straight to the camera because I wanted to, I've been wanting to do this video for a while uh, because it's so, so much stuff that I've learned over the years that I've wanted to help other people with. And this came from the idea that people ask me all the time, number one, how did you get started? And number two, how did you start working all this ministry stuff into the, your talent and vice versa? So that is the question I wanted to tackle today. So the video is called Letters to a Christian Artist, but truly you don't have to be a Christian artist for this video to be for you. It's for anyone who's a Christian because we're all called to the same things. We're all called to share the gospel. And these are different tips and techniques and things to help you do that, help you build the kingdom and get along with other people and do it. So we kind of set it up as a top five list of things to do and maybe not to do as a Christian artist or as a Christian in general. So. Here we go. Number five. Number five is be humble. Now that one starts this list because in this video I'm going to be saying you and you and need to do this and I did this. But the problem is I don't want this to come off as I'm an expert and you're the learner. And that's not the point. I'm just as guilty as everything in this video as anyone else. So when I say be humble, it's because we all have to be humble. Because here's the problem. You are as an artist have people who want to see what you do. Maybe they want to listen to your albums. Maybe they want to watch you on stage. Maybe they want to watch your movie or see your video, whatever you do. And it kind of builds up this bubble of self, like they want to see me, I'm important. The problem is, we're not important. It's not about us, it's about him. All of this is temporary. It can be taken away in a second, snuffed out totally in a second. And we have to be okay with that. We have to be humble enough to realize, hey, this is not about me, it's about the kingdom. So, that's number five. Number four, number four is to surround yourself with Christian mentors, brothers and sisters in Christ who can help you uh, both with your talent and with your ministry side of things. When I first got started, we were blessed because God put several people in our life who just really took us under their wing and helped them when we started. There are so many people out there who are not helpful. Uh, I know that sounds bad, but they just aren't. When I first got started, I sent letters and messages to so many people saying, hey, I like what you do. Uh, can I ask you for some advice? And, I don't mind not answering, I understand people are busy, but I would get letters back of things that were just not helpful and, and purposely not helpful and things like, hey, don't, don't bother me kind of stuff. And I know people are busy and all that kind of stuff, but I always wanted to be gracious and I always wanted to help other people with this. So what I would suggest is find people in your life who maybe share this talent with you, who share ministry. Maybe you've got a youth pastor or a mentor or something like that who means a lot to you and say, hey, can you look at what I'm doing? Uh, can you help me with it? How can I grow in this ministry, in this art, whatever it is? Number three, and this is a quick one, it is the name drop. <laughs> the name drop is one of those things that's kind of obnoxious. And we do it a lot of times, and I'm so guilty of this in the past, especially of um, networking is a thing we kind of have to do as artists to get other people to hear about your stuff. You want to tell people about what you do and let them hear about it and tell other people about it and all that kind of stuff. But it's kind of one of those things where, okay, how do I network? How do I market in a way that comes off as authentic and not sound like I'm just using people? So the name drop is one of those things that we can do sometimes that is just, it seems like a good idea, but it's not. You see this on Twitter all the time. Hey, I was having dinner with my friend John the other day. You know, Foreman. Uh, maybe you've heard of Ben Switchfoot. That is so annoying <laughs> because the story has no substance. It has no meaning. It's just, hey, I want you to know that I know this person. I'm a big deal because I know this person. It doesn't matter. People are just people, man. When you realize that, when we realize that people are just people on stage, off stage, it just makes it so much easier to work in the kingdom because you don't have those nerves of, oh, this person's a celebrity. I've got to go meet them or whatever. We work with people all the time. I am not any sort of celebrity. If you, if you wanted to say that, I would be like an E-list way on down the line. But I'm not. I don't even consider myself that. But we do work with people who you would know, you know, radio people, all that kind of stuff, people you hear on the radio, see on TV, all that kind of stuff. We, we meet them. But if I was to sit down and be like, hey, so I was hanging out with my friend Toby Mac the other day. Oh, that's all to my story. Now you'd be like, 
That was kind of weird. You just tell me you know Toby because you want me to know that you know Toby. Now, if it's something you need to tell and the name is important to the story, like, I don't know, you can figure it out. If it really furthers the story and is needed, you can throw that name out there that you know to help you name drop. But if it's just a name drop just for the sake of bragging to kind of build yourself up, because what you're doing is you're using someone else to build yourself up. And honestly, it doesn't work. People don't like that, it's not cool. I'm only saying this because I've been guilty in the past. So, number two. Number two is an important one, and it's very sensitive because it has to do uh, with kind of with number three and number five together, but it's this idea of everyone that you meet deserves your respect, deserves our respect, um, but unfortunately, because of this ladder we have to climb when it comes to artistry and ministry at the same time kind of mixed, there's this tendency to say, hey, what can this person do for me? That's who I'm gonna go talk to. Um, I've been guilty of in the past being, of, of ending a conversation early because I realized, oh, this isn't the person who brought me in or who can book me and it's, it's this other person. And I regret that very, very much. And, and it kind of hurts me to even say that on camera to you because it's really an honest kind of open sore that I would do that. Um, I, I, it's not even a struggle anymore. I just said, hey, I'm not going to do that. That's not who I am. I'm not going to just talk to somebody because I think they can get me further in ministry or in uh, artistry or whatever. So if I meet somebody backstage, I'll have a conversation with them. I don't care who they are, where they're from, what they've done. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to learn about those things. I'm going to care about those kind of things. If it's just the guy who walked in the back door because he meant to go in the front door, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to say, hey, can you, do you work, can you book me or something? It's just, man, we see people all the time, uh, bands and other artists and things like that, and they're so great backstage, they're so gracious and all that kind of stuff, but every once in a while, and again, I've been guilty of it, it's the only reason I can say this, I see this where people literally will find out, oh, hey, how are you doing? Oh, you, oh, okay, cool, I'll see you later. And they just totally don't want anything to do with somebody because they can't do anything for them. That is not what the body of Christ is about. If you're looking for just someone who can do something for you, and that's who you want to befriend, James talks about that, man, showing preferential treatment, and that's just wrong. It's not what we're supposed to be about. So just don't do it. I, I've tried my best for the last several years to say, you know what, God, I want to be who you call me to be to every single person that I meet, not just the ones who I think can get me further. And that applies to all of us in Christian life, man. If you want to just meet people who can help you out, it just doesn't work, man. God's not called us to do that. He's called us to be all things to all people and just to really not show any kind of favoritism, preferential treatment because of what somebody can do for you. So that's number two, whatever it is, I don't know what number I am. Number one, last but not least, and this is probably the most simple and the most easy to say, it's really hard to do sometimes, stay grounded in the word. Do not get caught up doing ministry and not minister in your own life. What that means is it's easy sometimes to get caught up doing ministry, doing good things. Maybe you're a church worker and you do stuff all around your church. Maybe you're uh, you know, so constantly focused teaching Sunday school, teaching uh, you know, a small group or something like that, that you wake up in two days in a row, you go, I don't know when the last time I read my Bible was. It's easy to do that. You say, now how can that be? That's impossible. You're always doing ministry. You're always doing things for the kingdom. How could, you, how could that be you? It is. It's tiring to do ministry. And a lot of times we focus so much on pushing ministry out and giving out ministry to other people that we don't even take time to read our Bible, to stay in our quiet time in prayer. You would not be surprised how often this happens to people. It's not just me, it's other people. You ask them and, and they're, when they're real genuine and honest with you, they'll say, yeah, it, it's a struggle sometimes. I can get up on stage and preach. I can get up, I can teach a Sunday school class or whatever all day long, but my own personal walk suffers sometimes. And if we're all transparent and honest, I think we can all say that sometimes. So we have to be disciplined on the road or at home or whatever you do to get in that word and to really spend time with God on an everyday basis and really strengthen our walk. Because if we do that, all of these other things are just gonna come naturally and we'll be effective for the kingdom. If we're not walking ourselves, how can we lead other people? So that wraps up the top five list of letters to a Christian artist. Listen, I know it's not really a letter, I know it's not just for artists, but I just wanted to catch your name and you get the point. But the point is this, man. I hope you can use this stuff in this video. It's helped me along the years kind of learning this stuff the hard way and I don't want you to have to learn it the hard way. So take care, enjoy. If you want to see some illusion videos and all that kind of stuff, check out BrianDrakeShow.com or just check out some of these videos down here on the YouTube channel. I'm doing that thing where I point. I don't know um, 
if it makes sense to point because you know that the videos aren't actually below me, they're probably to the side. And now I'm talking about pointing about the video. So you know that it's probably a good video channel if I'm doing all that stuff, right? Anyway, check it out. Follow us on Twitter at Brian Drake Show. We'll see you next time.